Norman Graham, your host here at uh, Sisters Place, 456 Nostrand Avenue. We're here with the Honorable Viola Plummer. She's representing the Freedom Party movement here. Can you tell us something about the party, sister? Absolutely. The Freedom Party team. And we're going to be talking to those people who are going to make the Freedom Party happen. We here at the Freedom Party is talking about that we as a people, black, Latino and working class people really need a choice in this electoral situation. And so we decided that we have to have a party independent of the Democrats, Republicans, Green, independent, what have you, that we needed a party that's black led and that really has the concerns and issues of our people. In that regard, we uh, are trying to, and I should say we are going to get on the ballot, a prerequisite that comes down from the state is that in order to become a new party, you have to have 15,000 signatures from across New York State. I win. That you, those signatures have to be in by August 7th. Okay. And so what's going on here today is people are bringing in their petitions. And these are the people who are gonna make the Freedom Party become a reality because these are the workers. Okay. You know, this brother, for instance, Brother Lynn, retired from the United Nations. And Brother Lynn is here because he understood we had to have a Freedom Party. Um, sister Corbett, you know, um, the sister from, I, I call her from Aiken, but her last name is Aiken. It's real important that we zero in on the workers we that's going to make We're going to get around to them, yeah. but I understand you have to have 50,000 votes by when? We, in November, to qualify to get on the ballot. We have to have 50,000. We votes. have to have 15,000 signatures to get on the ballot August 7th. And you could be and any party. And after, you could be any party, you could be... A registered voter. A registered voter in New York State. Okay. That's all you have to be to sign our our petition. Legal petition. Yes. Okay. And once we are on the ballot, which is after August seventh, mm -hmm. November we'll be on the ballot and we have to get fifty thousand votes from across the state. Okay. So that we are confident that A, we're going to get on the ballot, and we're going to get on the ballot with three times the number of the required signatures, which means that we will be 96% toward our goal of 50,000 votes for the November election. Can you, it's always good to see a young brother active in a movement. Can you tell us your name, young brother, please? Yes, Lamont Carolina. Tell us why you are uh, a volunteer in this here movement here. I'm volunteering because uh, time is money. And, you know, I'm contributing my money to this cause. I'm spending my time wisely because it's just a movement that needs to be followed. You know, we got moments in history where things occurred and people didn't jump on them. And then afterwards, in hindsight, when the movement popped off or the movement, you know, went down or fizzled, they said, oh, man, well, I should have, could have, would have. Or, you know, yeah, I was a part of that. I want to be able to tell my grandkids. I want to be able to tell my, 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 my kids and my grandkids when they're older, like, the Freedom Party, what was that? And I can say, yeah, I was down with that. So you feel this movement here is going to be one of those historical moments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In it right now, you can't tell. You can't, you can't see it being a historic moment. But I can and I think afterwards, people will be able to see it. When we're on that ballot and we're elected, we got elected, we say, wow, there's a, there's a first black and Latino-led political party in the state of New York. That's never happened before. First, tell us your age. I'm 26 years old. Okay, so now, have you been active, or this is your first time being active in any sort of political movement? No, I've done uh, political work in different um, campaigns. Um, most notably, I was a field organizer for the Obama campaign in the state of Ohio. And why, what, what made you think about this movement here? 
Well, well, you know, I, I'm with Councilman Barron, uh, and I followed uh, Violet Plum in the D12 movement, uh, G2 AUC, uh, Bob Law, James McIntosh, and these these people are, you know, they they they've come before me, but they're laying down track, and to get that opportunity to follow in their footsteps. It's not even a second, you know, not even a second thought for me. Uh, they're leaders. They're leaders. And they're, they're, they're given a lot of knowledge. And it's, I'm, I'm following that. That's the bottom line. The Freedom Party, uh, the spirit of Fannie Lou Hamer in the 60s in Mississippi when she started the Freedom Democratic Party Mississippi, or the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, and the, the, the trouble that she went through, but the reward that, that she gave to her people. I'm, 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 I'm down to try that. I'm not her, but I'm Lamar Carolina, and I'm going to do my part. So I can say at the end, yeah, I, 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 was, I, I had a little piece in that. I did something there. Okay, tell me something. About how many signatures you feel you have, and let the people know in your age group, what are you doing, and what does it take for this year to get uh, become a reality? Well, right now, I'm not at will to disclose how much you know, signatures we have. Uh, we're still doing the math, and then uh, I think that you know the candidate should, should really be the one to be saying that. But um, I will say that you know we, we definitely want to be picking it up. We want to tell all our people that you know let's keep going, let's keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. We I have the Honorable Inez Barron from the 40th Assembly District in East New York. How are you, sister? I know I'm supposed to have you on the interview on several times. Uh, the Albany um, Black Caucus up there, we missed it. But I'm glad to have you here now. Your husband is running for the Freedom Party. Can you tell us about it? We're going to also talk about your district also. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and to talk with you, have this opportunity, and indeed a privilege, because I count it a privilege that I've been able to be selected by those persons in my district to represent them in Albany. And we're here at Sisters Place because this is the Freedom Party movement. And it's, it's a, a firestorm. It's just catching on and catching on and going all across this state and across this nation. Because people understand that we need to have a political organ that represents our interests and is a voice for what the concerns are that we have. Because we don't see that our issues as a people, black, Latino, those oppressed, marginalized people, working class people, people who are out of the working system, don't have an expression in the political system. And now is an opportunity for us to be able to formulate that organ and be able to have that go forward. Okay, why your husband, the head of this party? Well, he has a history and he was asked, he was summoned, he was requested to do it. So it's not something that he sat down and said, oh, I'm gonna do this, but it's something that came about as a reaction to the outrage that he expressed over the Democratic Party just seemingly anointing the person that they wanted to have without any kind of expression of us as a people. Anybody? We here with City Council Member Charles Barron of the 41st uh, City Council District, 42nd City Council District. The last time we spoke, he was running for the Speaker of City Council. That was just a couple of months ago. This time he's running for the governorship of the state of New York. Can you tell us about this Freedom Party that you have created and why? Absolutely. This is all about power. If you don't have power in the state or leverage over those who have power, then you can't get anything done but complaining. So what we're doing is following their rules. We're sick and tired of the two-party system. Both parties balance the budget off the backs of poor working class families. Both parties are controlled by corporate interests. The Democratic Party chose an all-white state slate in order to go ahead in the state. So we decided since we've been politically blacked out, that now we're gonna start our own party. And the way to do that, you have to run for governor and get 15,000 signatures to get on the ballot and 50,000 votes in November, and you have a party. This will be the first time in the history of this state that we have a black and Latino-led party that will have the interest of all the working class families in this state. We would rather have a party that's going to say, hey, how about a pit surcharge? Personal income tax for those who are making 500000 or more, you can get billions of dollars to balance the budget. Don't shut down schools. Don't close down daycare centers. Don't shut down senior citizen centers.